So it's quite late in the night for me these days. It is 1.38. I used to be able to do this willy-nilly. I used to stay up at all times, but now I've gone into sort of a routine. But before I head off to bed and listen to some podcasts, I just wanted to talk about my experience of homelessness in a sense and the people that I met now this I, I'm, I'm quite sleep deprived but I feel as if I, I, I want to I just want to speak so YouTube is a place for that so my um, everybody was in the know about me having a deadline of being kicked out of the house, which I didn't. Uh, I've also realized that I've only got 15 minutes, so I will just make one video, and maybe I'll make a follow-up video. But I was, I was unawares the whole time until I got called in for a meeting, and I thought it was to... Um, view a house or something like that. I, I thought I'm going to go to this organization, look at some houses, get my own place. And what ended up happening was I went to this place and they sat me down and they told me, your mother has told us, she's put it in writing, that she wants you out the house by um, May 1st. Was it me? No, I mean April 1st. And I got told this on, I think it was the 28th of March. So I had like four or five days to absorb the information. And I had no idea what was going to happen. The people reassured me that, you know, we deal with this on a, you know, usually a weekly basis when somebody is given short notice and I was just completely stunned. Uh, it was, it caught me off guard. I, I had no idea it was coming. So that was a huge shock to me. And the fact that nobody told me until then, not even my mother, my sister, I don't, I don't think my sister, I'm, I think she might have known but I, I asked my mother about it, and she said it wasn't for her to say. And I, I thought to myself, you're the one that made the decision. You're the one that wrote a letter. You're the one that's finalizing everything. And somehow, in your warped sense of reality, you don't feel any need of your decision to tell the people that it's going to be affecting of your decision. So that, that was that. So I had no idea on where I was going to be staying, if any place at all. I, I was guaranteed a place because I was found eligible for the homeless program, which I just found absurd. What about all the poor people that, you know, they, that get by on, on drugs and alcohol and then they're not eligible because that on substances, but that's how they get by. You're not helping them by keeping them out on the streets. It's a fucked up system in a fucked up world. But I I got into the system, so even if I didn't have a temporary place to stay until I got my own place, they would have put me into a hotel. So I would have been moving around from place to place to place. Luckily, that didn't happen. I was told that I was going to be going to this place and it was supposed to be a really nice place nobody was in there yet so on the day of moving I got a phone call from them saying that I can't go to that place and I was thinking oh, okay well where am I going to go I'm not sure and then they said hey we're going to stick you to this other place this other shared house and I thought oh, well okay it's not what I was expecting but then again you know I wasn't expecting to be kicked out either so I, I go to this place it's it's, it's 
not bad. It's it's really not bad. If I can find some, if I can f later on, if I can find uh, some videos, because I did take some videos on my iPhone. I'm not sure if they're still on there or not, but I'll give you a little. That that will be part two of this video if it if it does happen. So I go to this place. It's obviously a shared house for people who are homeless for a number of reasons drugs maybe they you know they did drugs they got kicked out by their parents they stopped doing them they go to here and you know the sad reality is that people were still doing drugs in the house so they can clearly deny people who are using drugs that they know about it's it's all about deception i think because the people that did drugs in the house you know they obviously lied and got in so their little notion of you know we help people that want to be helped who's to say that people on the streets drinking or whatnot don't want to be helped they do want to be helped but your system doesn't allow them to be helped unless they lie and then they go into the house and they do drugs anyway it's a so st stupid system you know you can't put all people from all varieties of life varieties of life into a house you know without accommodating for their needs if they have drugs substance abuse problems whatever make your own program for them okay then they won't need to lie to get help they won't need to be out on the streets to get help it's f fucked up so whatever i'm there and I'm just, you know, I'm, it's a shock, obviously. So uh, there was five other people there. Well, four, five, including me. There was a, a guy named Roger who was like in his late 40s who uh, had an accident, a car accident. And I'm guessing he, well, he lost his job and couldn't afford to pay. There was Crystal who... Uh, her words, she's a professional bum and she doesn't really want to get out of shared housing, which I find peculiar. But And then you have another person called Paris, who's a teen mom. You have another dude called Craig, who's a huge stoner and a weird, weird guy. Weird but nice. And then you had me. So I'm in this house, not knowing anybody. I'm, I've been put into the smallest room in the house, which was just a huge pain in the ass because it, I was on the top floor as well, and all the heat from all the houses, you know, the houses, all the house was being, you know, heat rises. So I was cooking on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, the house that I was staying in was right next to a main road. So I, I could open the window to let what air could come in, in. But I would also have to deal with the increased noise of buses, coaches, kids, cars, motorbikes coming through. Not only that, there was a street light right next to the window that sh uh, shone through at night, which was another pain in the ass. And I couldn't shut any curtains or blinds because they didn't work. So... A smallest room in a house with people that I don't know. And surprisingly, well, I don't think it is surprisingly at all. When, when a group of, I think when a group of people are all in the same situation as you are, I think there is a mutual respect for everybody. You know, you're obviously, you're here for a reason. Nobody cares what the reason is. You know, sometimes people will open up to you, sometimes they won't. So you're all here for a reason. It doesn't matter why you're here. You're here, so you might as well try to enjoy it. And everybody was extremely friendly, which kind of did catch me by surprise. I thought, you know, I thought they might have been... I was quite ignorant because I thought that only... It was just like going to be troubled kids that just disobeyed the parents and got kicked out. But it it turned out to be a lot deeper than that. 
as humans often are and that was it was quite an experience i i gradually met everybody you know tried to figure out how to work things out we had a cleaning rotor that nobody stuck to which was good for me because i have back problems and it would have just destroyed me you know looking after a three story well three floors not story three three floor house you know each you know you all have your days it would have killed me so that's i was there for about 28 days 26 no 28 i no, it was, yeah, it was about 28 days. And when I got my own place, it, it wasn't that sad to be leaving the situation. I found it was sad because I made a connection to everybody common connection that we all had and that was sad that I did leave and it was also kind of reassuring to know that you know you got you've got four other people in the house you know they they don't care about your past and you know it was like family because they were they were they were there for you now in the here and in the now you know they weren't going to judge you for like what you did in the past and I suppose that's 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 what I liked about the place. You, I didn't really expect to make friends, but you can find friends in the most unlikely of places. Now I do have some crazy stories that I will, I will tell. I will make a part two. Um, just giving a little detail of each person, because there is some, there were there was some funny stuff that did happen. And some stories that I would like to share. <laughs> I mean, as nice as they are to me, the stories that I'm going to tell might not shine favorably. 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 Favorably on them. That's a word I can't pronounce now. But they were really nice. So I will... I just wanted to vent a little bit. I just wanted... It really wasn't that much... Detail, if you if you think about it, this video, it was just more of me, just sort of getting that off my chest. I will, like I said, make a part two about the housemates that I was with and the stories that did happen. And how alone I was in a sense but in another sense I wasn't because l losing ties with my family I lost ties with my dad's side a few months prior before losing uh, the relationship with my mother so going from I still have a good relationship with my sister, but going from, you know, lots of love and family and support to nothing, to being so alone, but then finding new family within, within other people in the same situation, it was just, it was quite inspiring to be a part of. And I don't think people knew what they were doing in a sense. They, I don't think they knew the impact that they were all having on each other, such a positive impact. But it definitely made my stay there an enjoyable one. And it did keep me on my toes, which I will go into in into another video. But thank you very much for listening. I'm going to go off to bed, listen to some The Guide to whatever Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington talk about. But yeah, I will... I have had some PMs as well about what people want me to talk about and I will begin to them friendship religion just two of them that I know off by off the top of my head so thank you very very much again and good night good day good evening I love you